Hey, Dr. Romano, where's the party? Well, it's New Year's Eve 2020, so I thought I would start the early festivities by going over an organic chemistry question that you will be enchanted with. First of all, I want to commend you all on surviving the study group. I do post some pretty challenging questions, and I'll continue to do so through the year, and hopefully you'll do some good learning. Our new book has a lot of good problems, and I think you're going to really love them. I really worked hard on creating novel type of questions. With that said, I want to share with you a question um, that was actually, um, it was a question that it was on my organic chemistry exam when I was a student. The question that our teacher asked, it was actually a bonus question. And the bonus question was worth 10 points. And the question was for you to design a synthesis. And if the professor liked it, he would give you from one point to 10 points. Now that all sounds really good, but there was a caveat. If he didn't like the question and you decided to do the bonus question, he can give you a grade on that question from zero to minus 30. So therefore you had to go at your own risk. So if you wrote a question, for example, you had a ketone and you just reacted it with a green yard and any bubble head knows, you would probably get a minus 20 on it. I want to show you the question that I came up with on my exam. I actually got 110 on the organic two final when I was a student that my professor was simply enchanted with. And I want to share it with you. Let's take a look. Okay, Dr. Armano. Before I do so, I just want to make sure you understand what I mean by an electrocyclic reaction. It means that we're going to form a cyclic product that has fewer pi bonds than the reactant. Or if you went in reverse, of course, the vice versa is also true. So you're changing the number of bonds. You're going from a pi bond to a sigma bond or sigma to a pi bond involving a ring. What I want to do here is to start with cyclopentane, and I want to make one bromo cyclohexene. Now I admit, this looks bizarre. You've probably never seen this before. It's a good question to ask your teachers in school and see what happens. We got some big problems. One big problem is we're changing the ring size. That's a problem in itself, and secondly, you've probably never seen a vinyl halide of a cyclic compound. How exotic. I want to show you how I did it. I actually did this in lab after the final exam was over. I took bromine and light on cyclopentane to make bromo-cyclopentane. Then I heated it up with a very strong base. And that drove me an E2 reaction, as you all know. So I first did a radical bromination, then I did an E2. Here's a very important DAT type of question involving what we, what we call a carbene. I'm going to react bromoform with N-butyllithium, and that gives me this beautiful looking bicyclo compound. All right, now the hard part. The next part is I heated it up and I distilled it, and we do an electrocyclic reaction. The bromine's going to leave. And notice I'm going to break the bond between 1,5. Now notice I numbered it for you so no one gets lost. I'm going to break 1,5 and I'm going to lay down the double bond between 5,6 with a bromine leaving. And therefore, I come up with this allylic cyclic carbocation. The bromine the left attacks. And here I am. Now you have to think. Notice I got to get one bromine off. Well, I would reason that these two bond strengths are different. Therefore, this is the weaker one, this is a stronger bond. So I remove this off with lithium aluminum hydride while preserving, of course, the double bond. And therefore, I came up with a final product of one bromo cyclohexene. If you would have had me teach you this year, in the real world, that would have been your problem on my organic chemistry final, and it would have been worth 35 points. Thank you.